afternoon. Welcome to the Cathedral Basilica of St. James. Today is Friday, the fourth week in Ordinary Time. Our opening hymn is number 854, I Come With Joy, number 854. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Good afternoon. I was thinking earlier that, you know, about those children who have their birthday on Christmas, you know, it's like, you know, if you have it on two different days, you get two celebrations. But if your birthday is on Christmas, well, you know. And today is something like that because we're celebrating St. Blaise, bishop and martyr, but it's also the celebration of St. Ansgar. And St. Ansgar, no one thinks about him, you know, because he's so overshadowed by St. Blaise, right? Um, but we also want to remember him, too, because St. Ansgar was a great missionary to the Scandinavian people. And so he gave his whole life in evangelizing, you know, Scandinavia, specifically Denmark and Sweden. But St. Blaise, he was from Armenia, and he's very famous for uh, a story where he helped a mother whose son had a fishbone stuck in his throat, and he had prayed, and the child was relieved from this uh, injury. And so he became very famous for healing, and specifically throat ailments. And so perhaps you're here today for that reason to receive the blessing of the throats, which we will have after the Mass, okay? And so, just one more note. I was ordained a deacon in Rome in 1997, and my very first mass as a deacon was at St. Blaise Church in Dubrovnik in Croatia. And so I was going to look up something in Croatian to say, but, you know, I figured I'd probably mess it up, and so I didn't do that. But I just want to thank Croatia and Croatian people. I've since come to know how wonderful Croatian people are, and Dubrovnik is extremely beautiful if you've not been there. And so I thank you that I was able to celebrate my first Mass as a deacon in your country. So brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. As we pray the opening prayer, let us also remember the parish of St. Francis of Assisi, St. Blaise, where Monsignor Paul Jarvis is a pastor, and he is assisted by Father Gerald Dumont and others, that their ministry be fruitful 
and that they have a wonderful feast day. Let us pray. Hear, O Lord, the supplications your people make under the patronage of the martyr St. Blaise, and grant that they may rejoice in peace in this present life and find help for life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect hospitality, for through it some have unknowingly entertained angels. Be mindful of prisoners as if sharing their imprisonment, and of the ill-treated as of yourselves, for you also are in the body. Let marriage be honored among all, and the marriage bed be kept undefiled, for God will judge the immoral and adulterers. Let your life be free from love of money, but be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never forsake you or abandon you. Thus, we may say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, and I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The word of the Lord.
have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. King Herod heard about Jesus, for his fame had become widespread, and people were saying, John the Baptist has been raised from the dead. That is why mighty powers were at work in him. Others were saying, he is Elijah. Still others, he is a prophet like any of the prophets. But when Herod learned of it, he said, it is John whom I beheaded. He has been raised up. Herod was the one who had John arrested and bound in prison on account of Herodias, the wife of his brother Philip, whom he had married. John had said to Herod, it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Herodias harbored a grudge against him and wanted to kill him, but was unable to do so. Herod feared John, knowing him to be a righteous and holy man, and kept him in custody. When he heard him speak, he was very much perplexed, yet he liked to listen to him. Herodias had an opportunity one day when Herod, on his birthday, gave a banquet for his courtiers, his military officers, and the leading men of Galilee. His own daughter came in and performed a dance that delighted Herod and his guests. The king said to the girl, ask of me whatever you wish, and I will grant it to you. He even swore many things to her. I will grant you whatever you ask of me, even to half of my kingdom. She went out and said to her mother, what shall I ask for? Her mother replied, the head of John the Baptist. The girl hurried back to the king's presence and made her request, I want you to give me at once on a platter the head of John the Baptist. The king was deeply distressed. But because of his oaths and the guests, he did not wish to break his word to her. So he promptly dispatched an executioner with orders to bring back his head. He went off and beheaded him in the prison. He brought in the head on a platter and gave it to the girl. The girl in turn gave it to her mother. When his disciples heard about it, they came and took his body and laid it in a tomb. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Brothers and sisters, be very careful to protect your anointing. Be very careful. Do not underestimate the power of your anointing. Why am I saying that? It'll become plain in a moment. Today, in strong contrast to the first reading from Hebrews, we have the awful story of the Herods and the execution of John the Baptist. I mean, this is one sordid, horrible story. I mean, when you hear about it here, it's pretty bad. But when you hear the whole history of this family, it borders on gross. I mean, these are some strange people, all right? And so when you hear this, just keep this in mind that this is not not nice. Herod the Great had at least eight wives and at least 14 children. One was Herod Antipas, and when his father, Herod the Great, died, he gained rule over Galilee. In the year AD 26, He went on a trip to Rome to visit his half-brother, Philip, 
his wife Herodias, and their daughter Salome. Herod the Great had killed Herodias' father and his brother Alexander, and he married her to Philip, her uncle. He would have been around 20 when he got married, and she would have been around eight, eight years old, eight. During that visit, this is so ridiculous, it's almost hard to say. During, let's just think about this. He went on a trip to visit his half-brother, you know, in, in Rome. And while he's on this trip, he falls in love with his brother's wife. Okay? So they have a, a major fling. I mean, it's not even a fling. I mean, you know, they have like this major thing going on. And so as a result of this, he divorces his wife, Fris Frisalius, and Herodias divorced her husband, Philip, which as you uh, learned was her uncle anyway, and they married. Now Herodias was the wife of her, like I said, of her new husband's brother while he was still alive. This is what's so ridiculous. I mean, not only is it immoral, it's illicit and unheard of. But she didn't care at all. So in all this intrigue, we can see people are deeply in love. In all this intrigue, we can see that people are deeply in love. Yeah, they are. They're deeply in love with money and with power. Antipas was intrigued by John the Baptist and initially had protected him. But Herodias hated him to the core. Why? Because he called her out. He pointed out her illegal and immoral marriage, and she was determined to kill this guy. Since he threatened her power, money, and lavish lifestyle, she took advantage of the opportunity during a drinking party when Herod was bragging to all his guests because of Salome, his stepdaughter, had done a great dance. Now, remember I told you how sordid and awful all this is? Now, can you imagine him boozing it up, right? And he starts bragging, you know, because she did this dance. I'll even give you half of my kingdom. I mean, what is this guy saying? But I want you to really think, this is his half-daughter, and considering, considering all this other stuff going on, he enjoyed the dance so much. Think about it. You know, what do you suppose was going through this guy's mind? So the letter to the Hebrews reminds us that our lives are visible to the divine world. Because he says people have entertained angels without knowing it. And this can happen to you. You could be in CVS or, you know, just minding your business and interact with an angel and not even know. But the other thing is, is that we don't see the divine world from here. You know, we tend to think the divine world is up there somewhere or something like that. But the divine world has total visibility of our world. So everything that we're doing is everybody knows what we're doing. You know, and we ought to probably think about that. We acknowledge that our lives come from God and not from the material things in our lives, I hope. We have to be careful of those things that will damage our relationship with God. That's why we have to protect our anointing, because we're not just ordinary people anymore. We are the baptized. You receive an anointing in baptism. We are the, the confirmed. You receive another anointing. And for a deacon and for a priest, you know, we have another anointing. And so you have to protect this. This is a divine life in you that gives you access to different aspects of reality. Let's just put it that way. You know, and since you're not regular people anymore, you don't want to throw this away. You want to cultivate your anointing. You want to go deeper and deeper into what does it mean to be surrendered to God? That's why we don't love money. We use money, but we don't love money because we love the one from whom all things come, which is our God. But if we start to love the money, that's not what an anointed person does. 
It doesn't make any sense because why should you be more enamored of the effect rather than the cause? You go back to the source, not to the result. Illicit activities, immorality, and loving money more than God will damage our relationship with the Lord. Our story today shows, a pe- shows us people carried away with themselves, totally oblivious to God, and how their lust and greed led them to the execution of a prophet of God. Now really think about that. Their immorality and their total obliviousness led them to kill a prophet of God. And that same obliviousness, that same political intrigue and bad religion will eventually eventually lead to the execution of the Son of God. So we really ought to be careful that our own selfish preoccupations don't lead to the don't lead to the destruction in our own lives of all that is holy. Let us stand to pray. Let us now pray for those who are sick and suffering, for those who care for the sick, and for all who seek the blessings of good health. For those who suffer from sickness and disease, that they may receive healing, let us pray to the Lord. For the mentally ill and for their families, that they may receive comfort, let us pray to the Lord. For the spiritually ill and their families, that they may return to the Lord, let us pray to the Lord. For those with physical disabilities, that the strength of Christ may invigorate them, let us pray to the Lord. For doctors and nurses and for all who care for the sick, let us pray to the Lord. For those who seek the prayers of St. Blaise today, that they may be protected from afflictions of the throat and other forms of illness, let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, especially Bernadette Teme, for whom this Mass is offered, may God grant them eternal rest and peace in his heavenly kingdom, let us pray to the Lord. Loving God, we entrust these prayers to you and ask for your blessing upon them. And we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify our offerings by your blessing, O Lord, we pray. And by your grace, may we be set afire with that flame of your love through which St. Blaise overcame every bodily torment. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised, the very sufferings of what wonders of your might. In your mercy you give order to their faith, to their endurance you grant firm resolve, and in their struggle the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we with all the host of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord, Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you in need of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. 
as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Robert, our Bishop, his assistant bishops, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us now pray for the coming of God's kingdom as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be saved. Communion hymn is number 929, Let Us Be Bread, number 929. Let us pray. May the sacred mysteries of which we have partaken, O Lord, we pray, give us that determination which made your blessed martyr blaze faithful in your service and victorious in suffering. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so, as I said earlier, we will be receiving the blessing of the intercession of St. Blaise right after Mass, and we can form a line just as we do to receive communion. The Lord be with you. 
And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. And have a most blessed day. Thank you. The closing hymn is number 743, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. Number 743.